Hey ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for Digital Dojos and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of one of my favorite apps lately for the Mac and it's known as Timing over at TimingApp.com. I've been looking for a really great time tracking app lately and when I stumbled across Timing it was the perfect fit for what I needed. Something that can track not just my uh, professional usage of my Mac but also just kind of the personal overview of how I'm spending my days, how productive I am. I'm just really into that sort of thing. Um, but also on a professional perspective, running a client services business like ScreenCap, it allows me to give my clients a more overview details of how I'm working on their projects, how much time is being logged, so on and so forth. And that's where Timing App came in. Bit of disclosure, they are sponsoring one of my series of content that's going on right now over at Digital Dojos. That is the freelance series of content. And it's a perfect fit because if you think about you know freelancing and a full guide to that, a big aspect of freelancing is being able to track your time and being able to know where you spend it. So Timing App, again, huge shout out to them. I really thank them for sponsoring that separate series of content. But today, we're going to be just talking about the app itself. You can see here, super visual, super elegant, and that's what I really like about the application. And the best part, it's automated. Now, right now, I'm taking a look at the base version. There is a professional version that includes a little bit more features. I'll talk about that at the end. But the basic way it works is you have the app running in the background here. As long as a menu bar item is open, uh, it is tracking your time. You can see here it shows how much it's tracked today, your productivity score. Um, you can pause the app for a specific time or just outright. So for example, let's say maybe it's a weekend and you know you're not really going to be doing anything you know, that you really want to be tracking. So you can just pause it for a day or just pause it outright, for example, if you're not going to be at your computer or what have you. I personally just recommend having a launch at login just because I just wanted to always be tracking my information and, and be able to sort that out. So just really recommend making sure, that, making sure that's checked. Um, and then you'll see your overview tab here. So your overview tab is kind of where you get a look at everything. So right now we're just looking at this month, but I can obviously change it to like the past 90 days. I think I only have like two months of tracking since I've been using it, July and uh, a little bit of August so far. So you can see here, so far it's tracked about 30 hours of uh, usage when I've been on my computer. And you can see really, really cool breakdown of like your most active weekdays. For me, that tends to be Thursday, as you can see, which was interesting for me to find out. Uh, and then your most active hours as well. So for me, again, tends to be a little bit more in the afternoon. I'm a late riser and um, I'm, I'm late riser and I tend to stay up later uh, than is probably good for me. But you can see in, in the early morning, not much productivity or activity going on for me there. Uh, most productive weekdays, and, and surprisingly there again, Friday and Saturday actually tend to be a little bit more up there for me, and then your most productive hours. Obviously, the more you use this, the more you track, the better this kind of data will present itself. Um, but then it also breaks down things like in very detailed looks at your projects and tasks. You can see a majority of my day or my tracking in the last um, you know, two months has been web browsing, 16 hours of web browsing. And under apps, you get a real breakdown of what are you using, every app that you're using, how long you're using it for. And that's what's a real cool aspect. You can see at a very detailed level all these apps I'm using right now. And again, the majority of that being Google Chrome for browsing. And then the top right here, just a breakdown of your month and the same kind of concept here, the categories that you're spending in. For me, web browsing dominating most of that. Next to that is your review tab, and in your review tab is really great because this allows you to really define kind of where your time is spent and how you organize it. So for example, it gives you some sample projects um, outright. It, it defines like basic things like web browsing, uh, media. So by default, it assigns four different categories. So there's keywords, websites, applications, and folders. So for example, it knows that you know these certain categories within these um, within these uh, projects here, for example, YouTube, Watch, Google, it defines that as media. So it knows if there's keywords like YouTube involved, it's gonna automatically assign that to media. Uh, if the website youtube.com is involved, again, automatically assigns that to media. Applications like Google Chrome, iTunes, and Safari, again, tend to be related to media. So that's how it defines it. But let's say you start a new project. So for example, I started this project right here called Unproductive. And if I edit this project here, you can define things like the colors and the productivity scale. So I completely render that as totally unproductive there. Um, you can even set up rules in the future so that these rules will you know, track certain things. So for example, if I want to add a new rule, I can say if the keyword contains or this domain is included or this application is included, then automatically assigned to this project or what have you. Um, for me, unproductive includes things like social media, includes shopping and tracking and, and gaming, even though on this Mac I particularly don't do any gaming. You can see one minute has been logged. Um, and then I have things like client work. So you can see here client work 
is for things like communication and then finance. Um, there's not much in finance. But at the very top here, we have unassigned time. This is where things that have been logged by timing isn't necessarily placed in a specific category. And I can define that easily here in this review chart. So for example, simple note, that's what I use to take notes. A lot of times I'll write scripts for my videos. So I can actually define that as something like I can either put in client work or even, for example, reading and writing. I can put that in the reading and writing category and I'll automatically assign it to that project. So it now knows that keyword is associated with that. The same thing with apps, Spotify, that's considered, I'm gonna say that would be considered media, you know, so I can put that in the media project and it adds the time to that specific project. And there's other things here. So for example, like things like Microsoft Remote Desktop, that time that was tracked on it, for example, that it didn't know where to assign it, that's related to client work. And you can keep on doing that to kind of define, you know, uh, an add-on to your day's front. That's another email client I use. So I'm going to put that under client work. That automatically, that unassigned time gets placed into this project now and it adds on to the time and affects your overall productivity score. So the review tab is really great to always touch back on and look and, and kind of assign your projects, how you wanna kind of break up your um, organization system when it comes to your timing. Details will actually give you, you know, no pun intended, but um, the details, the details of everything that you are doing in, in, in a very, you know, strict level. So for example, browsing here, you can see in the 15 hours that I've been browsing the web, here are the sites that I was visiting. Here are the top, you know, things I was spending the t most time on and, and, and the actual time and date that I was doing that. You can sort it by duration, you can sort it by time, you can sort it by app activity. Um, but it's a really cool way on a you know, personal and professional level just to kind of see, you know, how much time was I spending doing on this or how much time did I actually work on that. Um, and that's where the details tab is really, really handy because you can get a full breakdown of how much time you're spending on specific things. And sometimes it's shocking <laughs> how much time you spend doing specific things, whether it's watching videos or what have you. Uh, and last but not least, you have your reports tab. This allows you to export out the data um, that you have logged. And this is really great, for example, with ScreenCap, I've been looking to give my clients a little better or, uh, you know, idea of how much, for example, let's say I have a project and we charge by the hour. We don't just charge for the content time. We charge for the research. We charge for the video editing. And a great way to actually log that is through this. I can show them, you know, on this date I worked on and you can define the date. So, for example, if I said, you know, today or yesterday or what have you, um, if it was, you know, had any information logged in, I can say, you know, this is how much time I spent doing, you know, this specific thing. And I can export it to a CSV file. Um, if you get the professional, you have more options like PDF or Excel file. And I can say like, here's a breakdown of all the time I was spending on your project. And then I can relate that to billing and, and invoices and stuff like that. And that's where it really steps up and becomes, uh, you know, another layer on the professional level of time tracking and the importance of that. So again, you know, the real great aspect of an app like this that I personally like is just that whether it is tracking it for personal or professional usage, in my case, both, it gives me an overview of my day. It shows me how much I'm working, how much time I'm spending on specific things. Um, and it kind of allows me to kind of track and, and, and score my productivity on a certain level. And on that note, I can actually define what is and what isn't productive. It's not just kind of a blanket statement. You can edit these projects. You can add rules. You can say, for example, like for me, sometimes when I'm on YouTube, that's not purely unproductive content because as a YouTuber, I'm on there a lot and I'm, I'm watching other people's content. Um, and, and sometimes I'm using YouTube to research specific things uh, for my own videos or for specific topics or for work-related things. So you can define those rules. You can define what's productive, what isn't productive. You can define which categories they go into and then, you know, go back at the end of the week, at the end of the day, look at your overview and see kind of how you've been spending your time and how that goes. So again, I really, really like this. It's, it's a really great application. Um, and just on a privacy perspective, all the data that's tracked is stored locally. So nothing is actually being uploaded to any clouds or, or, or like some storage servers, anything like that. It's all stored locally. So your data is all protected. That's another really great aspect that I like about it. it supports a lot of apps, uh, supports a lot of data, obviously, and, and really visually just an elegant application. Um, if you are interested, you can check out the website over at timingapp.com. They have three different versions. The version that I was just looking at in this uh, video was the productivity version. That's the base version. Uh, I am looking to upgrade to the professional version because that allows you to actually do manual entries, which is really useful for me because sometimes I'm not, you know, at the computer or I forget to log stuff or, um, you know, what have you. Um, has other things like start and stop timers, which is really useful. And then you have the expert version. You can kind of feel out what works best for you and what feature set you need. All that information is obviously located over at timingapp.com. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, 
Thanks for watching.